Hello everyone today I am going to recap a Russian cartoon called Dino on the Moon. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Story begins in Flower City, all the shorties. Are busy harvesting crops? Dino decides to personally bring the watermelon and only miraculously escapes from it. It's his fault that the watermelon rolls down the mountain into the Cucumber River and floats away, and Duno reprimands his antipode for the loss of the fruit. As an apology, Duno decides to bring the biggest cucumber. At night he goes to the vegetable garden, where he encounters a maid beetle whom Duno manages to scare with his shadow. But then the beetle realizes that he has been tricked and swoops down on Duno from behind, hitting him on the head, and then flies away. In the meantime, Dano decides that a piece of the moon broke off and hit him on the head. He picks up the fallen hat and finds a luminous cucumber-shaped stone under it, and after returning to the city he gives his fine to Duno, who doesn't pay any attention to it. However, the next day everything in the house suddenly becomes weightless, and Duno discovers that it is caused by the accidental effect of a magnet on the moonstone. He decides to build a rocket and fly with the rest of the shorties to the moon. Chamomile waters the flowers in her garden with a watering can. Her friend Mushka informs her that there is a great argument in town today. Dano steps on the hose to shut off the water supply, but the hose douses everyone and knocks down the fence. Dano gets what he deserves, and Duno has a preliminary argument with the astronomer Glass Eye about whether there is life on the moon or not. He takes the former's suggestion to build a rocket negatively, believing that there is no engine that could lift the flying machine and bring it to the moon. Duno is going to demonstrate the constructed device of weightlessness made of a logarithmic ruler, moonstone, and magnet. Suddenly this device fails to work, and Duno becomes nothing but a laughingstock in the presence of Glass Eye and everyone else. In despair, he was ready to give up his venture and quit science altogether. But that evening, when the full moon arrives, Duno realizes that the moonstone only works during this period. Throwing the weightlessness device out the window, he causes weightlessness again, so he decides to hurry up with his idea. The next day, he and Bendem and Twistem build a rocket. Counting on meeting shorties on the moon, Duno decides to take the seeds of giant plants on the flight. At the same time, Duno, unaware that the weightlessness device is working again, steals it to test it on the fish. As a result, he almost drowns the device in the river, and for this, Duno suspends him from his flight to the moon. Duno is upset that he is not taken on the trip, and he decides to hide in the rocket at night so that the next morning he can fly unnoticed with everyone else. He takes Donut with him, who is not taken to the moon because he is too heavy, and as if he could not be lifted by the rocket. In the rocket, they get into bags of seeds Dino in pumpkin seeds, and Donut in watermelon seeds, which were meant for the moon shorties, and planned to sleep until morning. When Dino falls asleep, Donut is about to get out of the rocket to return home. But before he leaves, he gets scared of a toad over the side of the rocket it also got scared to the point that it fell down, falls into the rocket's control cabin out of fear, and accidentally presses the launch button. As a result, he and Dino fly to the moon. None of the residents of Flower City notices it, except for Chamomile, who at this time tried to persuade Duno to let Duno fly to the moon but Duno does not agree. She says, it's Duno. I can feel it. Waking up in space, Duno at first is surprised that there is no one in the rocket and that he and Donut are alone. His friend does not admit his involvement in the rocket launch. Then Duno meets the onboard computer no one and argues with it about who is in charge of the rocket. This leads to the computer disabling the controls, and the rocket, already flying up to the moon, begins to fall on it. Donut confesses to Dano that he accidentally launched the rocket. At the last moment Dano succeeds in making up with the no one computer, and the rocket lands. Dano and Donut get out of the rocket, and Dano falls into a crater, which actually turns out to be a passage to the outer surface of the moon to the inner core. It is populated by shorties like Dano. Monetary relations are in effect between them since capitalism has been established in Moon City, and the plants correspond to the growth of the shorties themselves. Dano descends with a parachute, but gets caught in the weather vane of one of the houses. 
A local journalist, star, flies by in a helicopter and takes air samples at high altitude. She promises to know that she will deal with him later and he will be her journalistic find. He refuses, unzips his parachute and falls from the roof of a house, which happens to belong to a rich man named Klops. Deneau finds himself in the garden, where he eats a pear. He is attacked by the guard, Fix, who reports the incident to Klops. The latter pits crocodiles, which are his pets, against Deneau. Deneau manages to escape over the fence. He does not understand what he is guilty of, as he has not previously encountered the concept of private property. After dinner at an outdoor cafe, the waiter asks Deneau to pay the bill. But he says he doesn't know what money is, so the waiter calls a policeman. As a consequence, Dano goes to jail. There he tells his fellow inmates about the giant plants on Earth and their seeds brought to the moon in a rocket. At the police station, Dano is interrogated by Inspector Michael and mistakes the protagonist for the famous bandit and robber fly fisher. Dano is taken out for a walk along with the other prisoners. One of the prisoners, Niga, is attracted by the story of Dano about the seeds of giant plants. He gives the latter a letter and asks him to give it to a trustworthy runt upon his release. Niga's friend, and his name is Julio. Sometime later, in the courtroom there is a confrontation between Dano and Fly Fisher's arrested accomplice, Handsome, who does not recognize in the protagonist his chief. After his release from prison, Dano meets Star again. It turns out that she has just been fired by the editor-in-chief of the Moon newspaper, Grizzle, for publishing an article stating that the chemical plants of the local oligarch spruts, which produce synthetic food products, are polluting the air. Together, Dano and Star go to see Julio. At the crossroads, Star asks Dano to wait for her and keep an eye on her suitcase. An organ grinder rides past Dano on a truck. He sings the song Wonderful Island and advertises Fun Island. A short time later, Star strikes against the Sprutz factories in the town square. She is caught by the police, but Star hits Inspector Michael on the head with a plywood poster and runs away. Dano rescues her from the police by pointing them in the wrong direction. However, instead of thanking him, Star rebukes him for telling a lie. At the junkyard, Star and Dano are followed by Mr. Krabs, the head manager of the Sprouts. They continue on their way to Julio. It turns out that he is an arms dealer and owner of a miscellaneous goods store located at number 13, Snake Lane. He offers Dano and Star an assortment of firearms, but Star explains that they are not interested. Then Julio offers one of the Capron stockings. Finally, Dano gives him Michael's letter, and Julio leaves, while Dano and Star remain in his store. Krabs comes to the editorial office of the Moonlight newspaper and orders Grizzle to send Star to Fun Island, since he and Dano have allegedly decided to make intrigues of Mr. Spratz. Otherwise, Grizzle will lose his job. Meanwhile, at the police station, Julio takes Miga out of jail by paying a bribe for him. The latter tells him about the seeds of giant plants and that they must be taken from the surface of the moon. This will require money, but it will be more difficult with it and then it will have to be shared with Dano. However, Miga, who found out in the jail that Dano is a simpleton by nature, suggests that Julio tricked the protagonist. At this time in the miscellaneous goods store, Star shows Dano the inner core of the moon on a map. There is a moon city, a large and mysterious moon forest, and an ocean, where there is an a fun island. Star tells him that this place is also called Fool's Island, and no one has ever returned from there. Then Dino learns how the moon shorties live without the sun. At this point Grizzle comes and offers Star a trip to Fun Island, but she does not believe him and refuses. Miga and Julio return to the store and chase Grizzle away. He and Dino and Star decide to form the giant plant joint stock company. By selling its shares, they will get money to build a flying machine to go to the surface of the moon and get the seeds of giant plants, and at the same time find Donut. Realizing that a good help in this endeavor would be a buzz in the lunar media, Miga and Julio doubt that Dano can prove his alien origins. Then starters to show everyone Dano's spacesuit, which he left in Klops's garden before. Miga and Julio disguise themselves as policemen. Together with Dano and Star, they go to Klops' house, 
arrest Fix and take Danoa's spacesuit. Nearby, Grizzle tries to catch Star to send her to Fun Island. However, Danel, Miga and Julio leave with her and inadvertently frame Grizzle, who is caught by the police on suspicion of trying to rob Klops. Finding the newspaper editor in possession of the ill-fated ticket to the island by decision of Inspector Melia Look, he has a ticket to Fool's Island, and he's fooling around here. As for Miga and Julio, they arrange a promotion for the Society of Giant Plants on television on the occasion of the arrival of Danel in Moon City and announce the sale of stock and the miscellaneous good stormers are spreading around the city that Danel seems to eat shorties, so the heroes have not earned anything. But Star tells the shareholders that Danel doesn't really eat shorties because he's just like everyone else. After the first difficulties, the shares of the Giant Plant Society begin to sell out. This arouses the interest of the lunar rich especially Mr. Sprouts, most of whom are in the artificial food business. Sprouts fears competition from the giant plants and worries that once the natural plants appear, the shorties won't buy his products. Then he calls Miggle and sends the police to the armory, who confiscate, on Sprouts orders, the suit of the unnamed man. Meanwhile, Krabs brings from Sprouts a suitcase containing a million farthing, and bribes Miga and Julio for half a million to wind up the giant plant society and run away with the money. Star and Danelle, who had previously managed to outsmart the policeman, return to the miscellaneous store, but find that the safe is open and there is nothing there. A note from Mijai and Julio tells them that they have to flee, and someday they will build a rocket. Danelle and Star decide to catch up with the fugitives and take their money. Meanwhile, Donut, who has remained on the surface of the moon in the rocket, eats a year's supply of food in 7 days, 11 hours, 38 minutes, and 6 seconds. But the no one computer scolds him for inaction. After that, Donut puts on a spacesuit, leaves the rocket, and also falls to the inner core of the moon. Because of the doldrums, Donut sinks to the shore of the moon sea. He learns that the locals do not eat table salt and sets up a salt mining and selling business. Then Donut becomes a skilled businessman and successfully uses hired manual labor. Eventually he becomes a millionaire, lives in his own villa, has his own servants and is called Mr. Doe. Sprouts convenes a council of capitalists, the kickbacks. During this meeting, the discovery of a spacesuit belonging to Donut makes Sprouts think of a mass alien invasion. The latter want natural plants on the moon which could lead to the ruin of the rich with their artificial products. To prevent the invasion, Sprouts tells the other lunar rich to build a flying machine to destroy the seed rocket on the moon's surface. To do this, the astronomical scientists have requested three billion farthings, and Sprouts suggests that the capitalists make their contributions. However, one of the participants, the owner of a tobacco factory, Skewperfield, refuses to participate in the fundraiser and escapes Sprouts then instructs Krabs to deal with the fugitive. In the meantime, Miga and Julio, who took Star's suitcase by mistake, flee the city and plan to hide out on Fool's Island. After grabbing their suitcase, Dano and Star escape the furious shareholders and hide out in a house on the shore of the Moon Sea. It is there that Krabs finds Skewperfield and plans to strangle him with a capron stocking. Skewperfield offers him the lucrative business of infiltrating the rocket taking possession of the tobacco seeds and increasing the profits from the sale of his cigarettes. Krabs takes him somewhere in his car. Meanwhile, Donut is going to find Dino tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, but decides to postpone the search. Since Dino and Starry failed to catch up with Miga and Julio, they are forced to spend the night under the bridge, because their remaining 20 centimes are not enough for even the cheapest lodging. It begins to rain with a thunderstorm. Soak Star and Dano meet homeless runs under the bridge, one of whom is named Goat Boy and stay with them. You can live under the bridge too, if you're friendly. The main thing is that the fire must not go out, or disaster will happen. Dano promises Goat Boy will keep an eye on the fire. Meanwhile, Krabs, under the guise of helping the case, brings Skewperfield to the forest and tricks him into hanging from a tree, assuring him that the aliens will surely show up at dawn with tobacco seeds. Because Dano, who had not justified Goat's trust, fell asleep, the fire went out, and Star caught a cold. She is in mortal danger. At this time, Skewperfield is found by Niga and Julio, who had previously run away from the shareholders. 
Demanding money for his release, they finally let him down from the tree. The suitcase, which actually belongs to Star, is opened, but it contains neither money nor the coveted tobacco seeds. The suitcase turns out to contain Starlet's books and her own photograph. To call a doctor for Star, Dino tries to earn money, but he is chased out of everything, both the merry bandstand and the street cafe. Finally, getting a job as a nanny for Roald and Mimi, Mrs. Minogue's crocodiles, Dino walks them in the park and then performs on stage with the song There Was a Grasshopper in the Grass, which the Moon Shorties really liked. For this, Dano gets money from the audience and pays for the services of Dr. Syringe to treat Star. But immediately afterwards, because of Minogue's complaint at the time of his employment she categorically forbade Dano to associate with the homeless, Dano and Star are caught by the police, led by Inspector Miggle, and sent to Fool Island as in the case of Grizzle, and their suitcase is left with the homeless. Ten days have passed in Flower City since the rocket's departure. Duno and his friends unsuccessfully try to find the rocket. They try to conduct a search in a balloon, but it leads to nothing, and the balloon itself bursts and falls down. Only the astronomer Glass Eye, looking through his telescope at the moon, by pure chance discovers the missing rocket of Duno, and in his haste reveals the truth. At first, Duno flatly refuses to organize a rescue expedition, due to the fact that Duno and Donut are to blame for everything, and now there is no engine to fly to the moon. Glass Eye decides to build his own flying machine in the form of a giant bottle of carbonated water. Bendem and Twistem and the other shorties build a new rocket based on an ordinary carbonated engine. They fail, Duno nevertheless realizes that he cannot leave Dino and Donut in harm's way. He comes to the theory that life is possible exactly on the core inside the moon and agrees to help shorties, focusing on Glass Eye's unsuccessful but correct idea. Duno decides to build a second rocket with more powerful engines using real rocket fuel since they had no moon rock to make a spare weightlessness device, and the team prepares for a rescue expedition to the moon. Meanwhile on the moon, in Lunar City, Krabs finds the bandit flapper, and together they rob a bank and steal the three billion furtings collected from the members of the kickbacks to destroy the rocket. The lunar astronomers learn that there is a second rocket flying from Earth to the moon. One of them informs the members of the kickbacks. Inspector Miggle, who has previously been injured in the pursuit of the robbers, reports to an alarm Sprouts. The latter orders him to destroy the rocket and the aliens, threatening him with demotion. A rescue expedition from Earth, consisting of 14 shorties, reaches the lunar surface and lands next to the compact first rocket. At the same time, the computers No-1 and No-2 are talking to each other. The travelers discover a crater, and Duno, confident in the existence of the underlunar world, decides to fly there on the first rocket. He takes Bendham, Twistum, and Dr. Pillman with him, while Glass Eye, who cannot agree in any way with the hypothesis of the existence of life inside the moon, remains in charge in the second rocket. And Duno and his friends make a landing in Moon City. The police, led by Miga, who have been sent to confront the predicted alien invasion, immediately rush to the rocket and find themselves in a state of weightlessness. They fire their guns, but because of the weightlessness they fly off in an unknown direction. Next to the rocket, Oat Boy holding a suitcase. He tells the cosmonauts that Dino has been sent to the Island of Fools. Donut, who had seen his friends arrive from his villa, runs to them, remembering in horror that he never went in search of Dino. At this time, Dunno and Star are having carefree fun on Fun Island, where there are amusement rides. They were going to build a boat to make their escape, but they forgot about it. Finally, Star remembers that no one has ever returned from the island and tries to warn the shorties about it. But they pay no attention to her and continue to have fun, believing that nothing will happen. Then Star leaves the shorties and goes deep into the Fool's Island into the mountains. In the mountains, Star suddenly meets her former boss, the editor Grizzle. He tells or rather, sings her that there is a special system under the sea driven by rides that absorbs the joy of all who live on Fool's Island. This joy serves as energy for the Sprouts factories, and under the influence of the air polluted by these factories, the shorties turn into sheep and rams. Seized by terror, Star returns to Dino, who is almost turned into a sheep. However, Duno, Dr. Pillman, Bendham, Twistum and Donut arrive in a rocket. 
They evacuate Danelle, Star, Grizzle, and the other shorties from Amusement Island using a weightlessness device, dismantling all the rides. As a result, this contributes to the cessation of power generation for the Sprouts factories, which are connected to the island in a single network. They stop and stop smoking, so the air is much cleaner. The energy system collapses and Fool's Island goes underwater. A special correspondent for Moon TV reports on the uncovering of Sprouts's insidious system. Upon learning of this from the news on television, Sprouts destroys his house in a violent rage. It was them, the damn aliens with their stupid rocket and their stupid seeds. They're the ones who ruined me. Scoundrels, rogues, vegetarians. Duno distributes seeds of giant plants to the inhabitants of the moon, and Dr. Pillman treats each of them with castor oil. Dano says goodbye to Star and tells her that she must have fallen in love with him. But she responds with a harsh and unequivocal protest. The astronauts depart on their return trip, ascend to the surface of the moon and return to Earth in two rockets at once. Once out of the No One rocket, Dano is happy to see the sun after a long time, and then he tells his friends that now they can go on a trip somewhere again. Duno is hysterical over these words, and Chamomile says to Dano is wildly incorrigible, to which, climbing a sunflower, he replies that if he was corrigible, then they will all just be bored with life. This is where our story ends thanks for watching.